everyone, welcome to The Marketing Drip, where we drip tips to scale your business digitally. Abby here, and today's episode is part of our fortune management series. We're talking with coaches all over the United States to give guidance for all dentists wanting to go to that next level. So in today's episode, I talked with Dr. Brian Passell. He's a managing director of fortune management of Greater Houston and the leading executive coaching firm for dentists. Brian has a PhD in industrial and organizational psychology and really brings a unique perspective to advising dental practice owners given his combination of academic background, professional experience in management consulting, and having grown up as a son of a periodontist who is also a client of fortune management. So let's go ahead and begin today's trip provided by Digital Resource, a full service digital marketing agency that is your resource for everything digital. Hey, Brian, thank you so much for joining us today and dripping some knowledge. I'm so excited to pick your brain, especially with your psychology background and just like how long you've been with Fortune. So thank you for joining us. Sure. My pleasure. This is awesome. I'm excited to do this. Yes. We'll have to keep doing it, you know? <laughs> right. Absolutely. <laughs> have the have the test of today's episode. No, no, no. But <laughs> but based on your experience, Brian, I mean, yeah. you've worked with a lot of dif- different dental practices in the greater Houston area. I mean, what do you find that is often overlooked when it comes to dental practices or people that skip by? There's a lot that gets overlooked. So to pick just one thing, you're putting me on the spot here. But, How much time um, do we have? Yeah. Right? So this is a whole story. Well, you said you wanted to keep this going. So we'll yeah. do this more than once. Um, <laughs> man, you know, there's so many opportunities in every dental practice to, to up their game. And each one is unique. So they're all starting in a unique place. So I'll just go with one of my passions. Um, it's a hot topic for me these days and, and has been for a long time is uh, leadership, mm. um, the dentist taking on a true leadership role, understanding what that means, um, how that drives a practice forward. So it's thinking outside of their clinical skill set yeah. and putting on a completely different hat, right? Um, and yeah, just setting it up. You know, it's not just um, I'm opening up a dental office and I'm hiring a bunch of people and we're just going to start doing dentistry. Um, right. That would be nice if it were that simple. <laughs> Uh, and you know, understanding the concept of leadership, um, the power of it, how does it move your team, how does it engage your your, your patients, uh, you know, really also what that role of leadership is in building and growing and developing a practice at whatever stage it's at, whether it's a startup or you're much further along in the maturity of your career, uh, you know, establishing your establishing your vision of what you want to become. And then how to bring the team along with you on that journey is so important. Um, so yeah, we could talk about fixing up your systems and your marketing, and uh, you know hiring the right people, and how to present treatment, and how to manage AR, and build the best schedule possible, all that. But if you don't, not know to where overwhelm you're go- anybody, yeah, right? I guess that there's a lot of things we could talk about, but what we're yeah. talking about is really that those those. Um, those characteristics, those attributes of leadership and the skills of leadership, because I believe that it can be learned. So there's that kind of classic debate of is it is it nature versus nurture kind of thing with leadership. And honestly, it's, it, it's not that complex as far as can you build it, grow it, um, and adopt those techniques and skills and strategies of leadership. So to me, that's an area that's really overlooked, particularly from a, a, a dental ownership, a dental practice ownership perspective. Yeah. I love that you say that because I mean, it is, it is very commonly known in dental industry is that, you know, they don't, dentists don't typically get a lot of education or the background of running a business and being that leader, it's all clinical. Um, And to your point, there's so many aspects of the business, but if you don't have that leadership hat that you constantly are wearing, or if you're not really, you know, making sure that you're putting that first and being that true leader, because even, Sometimes being a leader is just delegating things out. And if you're not thinking about being a true leader, therefore you could be missing out or putting your time into other efforts that is hurting your practice from all aspects of the practice. Yeah. I mean, it, gosh, I don't even know where to begin. There's so many, so many places where it comes into, into play, right? So yeah. from the point of, of again, deciding where you're trying to go, right? So if you can, with clarity, crystal clear, you know, view of what you want to become, that that vision. Then from there, you start to know what decisions to make and 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 how and when, and you can 
then show that vision to your team. If you can communicate that well, which again is a leadership skill that you can learn, um, and then get them to have buy-in with, with that. And then how do you support your team? And how do you delegate? And how do you create a high-performing, self-managing team that they're mm-hmm. empowered and it's not all coming back to you, right? And yeah. come to your point of they're not trained for this. Well, you know, dentists are trained to kind of focus in an area about that big, right? The size That's of your so mouth, true. right? Yeah, and, yeah. And we're, at, we're, we're we know that to, to, to build a thriving enterprise, a business, an organization, you need to be thinking way out here and, right. and knowing how to, to wrestle that in and work with all those pieces. And that's a very different part of the brain uh, than the clinician part, right? Both are critical. You can't, you can't have the dental practice without your clinical skills, obviously. Um, right. But you're not going to have much of a business, a successful practice without the leadership. Yeah. Absolutely. And I love that you say it's teachable too, because th- I think that's maybe For the sure. most defeated is like, oh, I'm not, that's not my personality. Like I'd rather have yeah. Renda up <laughs> front run it or something, you know, it's like, no, 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 it's not a personality trait. Every, every personality can adapt. It's having the right skills, the right techniques, a good coach that's going to like keep you accountable for it t- too and the right team behind you. Um, uh, but they're, 100%. Yeah. Oh, I love how you said, you, know, you kind of, you kind of tossed me a softball there, right? having a great coach. So. <laughs> So like I'll go a little different direction, right? Like like one of the one of the classic kind of coaching techniques or models that, that we use so often, it's so effective. It's it's so simple, right? It's you ask the person, you know, who do you need to be right now to do what you need to do to get what you want to get? Ooh. Whatever that is, whether it's like near term success or like how are we gonna get through the day? Like I wanna have a successful, productive day to yeah. I want hit this goal in five or ten years, but who do you need to be right now? And in coaching, you're asking questions, right? So who do you need to be? Well, most rational dentists will be able to say, you know, well, I know I need to really be able to inspire my team or I need to give clarity to them what we're trying to accomplish today or this week or this month, except you can fill in the blank, right? And so yeah. by going through that process, we're just identifying what, do you, okay, what do you need to do? Like, what, what right? And, and, and who do you need to be in that process make sure you get it done. So I need to be more mindful. I need to be more resourceful. I need to be more inspiring, be more energetic, fill in again, fill in the adjective, the blank there. And yeah. now it's like, Oh, okay, I got this. And that's, that's just more on the, the mindset side of it. And then mm-hmm. teachable is also the mechanisms, the people technologies that you can put into place, like how to have a proper meeting with your team. So you can identify what needs to be worked on and what's your role in that meeting right yeah that yeah. that you, a, a, anyone can learn that and if you can master those like forget mastery like if you just get better at it right yeah that's leadership that's leadership or even recognizing it like if you're okay if you it's like a go into rehab right like you have to realize <laughs> that you have a problem the niche of a problem right <laughs> yeah before you can like get better at it and it's like almost identifying uh, hey, i want to be better that's leadership well, right there. You I, know? I always love it when a dentist comes to me and we have an open conversation right at the front end of our relationship, right? Like, let's say, I know I'm struggling in this. Like, I, 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 I know something's not right. You oh, know? And like, yeah. for some reason, I don't know, the team's running amok or I can't get them going the right direction. Or I, I tell them what I think and nothing happens. Mm-hmm. Nothing changes. And they know, they, maybe they don't have a name for it yet. You know, they can't. They don't have the label of leadership, um, but then we can yeah. throw that out there and say, you know what that is, Doc? That's really about leadership. And that kind of stuff to give them that framework. Again, that makes it teachable, right? If I have the framework, that's something more tangible and I can see it, I can touch it, I can smell it, and we can yeah. identify I love you know, what parts you need to work on. It's a trajectory on versus and, and just being like, like oh, I, I need to get better. I'm overwhelmed. I'm. It is what it is. I am who I am, or this is yeah. what it is. Yeah. I can give you a real life example. This this literally just happened this morning on a coaching call with a wonderful client of mine, such a sweetheart of a person and really wants to do well and do the right thing. And there's a lot of change happening in the business and the organization. And he's like, well, what do you think of this idea? Maybe I was thinking of having one-on-one conversations with each employee to get a sense of where they're at and let them know what yes. changes I have planned <laughs> and where I'm thinking of going and da, da, da. I said, first of all, love the idea. Second of all, that's a perfect leadership move. The more communication, the better. We're going to map out what that meeting will look like. So you're not kind of 
playing you know throwing stuff against the wall and seeing what sticks yeah. but like, you're prepared but that's a perfect leadership moment right touching base with your team showing that you've got their back that you are empowering them to be successful mm -hmm. in your organization by informing them of what's coming ahead that's what leading is right we're giving them direction you you, you, you lead your horse because you know where you want to <laughs> go and you, that, yeah. that's what I'm comparing your team members to horses <laughs> but but that's the leadership right you, you, no mm -hmm. but but your 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 obligation to them is to show them where you're going because most people get frustrated or burned out or want to leave you if they don't understand why we're doing what we're doing yeah. what's what's the end game what am i working towards you know, yeah. there's, there's so much more. Well, I, mean, it's such a loaded, I, I mean, I think in general, going, it's a loaded going, question, going, but even yeah. leadership as a whole is, yeah, it's also a loaded topic. You know, there's so many things that come into play for it. And then you know, the, what is, oh, what is that? I don't even know the book or the author, but you know, it's talking about like the best leader is creating more leaders to create more leaders. And, you know, so it, in return, thinking outside the box and I, I Think to your point there it's that roadmap of making sure that yeah. you're not only talking about it but you have the action items to actually make it happen and then that's going to yes. empower the team and then they're going to want to do more and um, be better because you're bettering yourself for them yeah. and yourself and the patients then see it it's just like a trick you know it just trickles it's down. huge and yeah. I'll, I'll pick up on i'll pick up on something you you said in there that might sound small but it's big yeah. uh is that you know you read about how a, a purpose of a leader is to create other leaders. So if we think about the work experience in your average dental office, regardless of what role you're in, except for putting the dentist aside, there isn't really much of a, of a, of a career ladder for whatever mm. position you're in. It's just, it's a yeah. small organization. It's not a lot of vertical movement. If you're in hygiene, you're in hygiene. If you're an RDA, you're an RDA. You know, it's just not like next level is versus being in a major corporation where you can come in as a analyst and work your way up to a senior manager, to a director, to a vice president. We don't have that. It's okay? so true. And yeah. So, so, but leadership is something you can share. And mm -hmm. that's another way to add value to an employee's experience in working in your organization is let's create leadership opportunities. And that can be shared by anybody in the business if you structure it the right way, obviously. So we can empower them to make decisions and to give direction and to even, yeah, in so many different ways. So yeah. um, that's another way to layer in kind of how your your employee value proposition. Like why should, should somebody want to work here? Well, here we look at everybody have the opportunity potential to be a leader within this business. And here's how we can do it, right? We have the framework for that. That's a whole other conversation, but the tools and techniques we have for that that we can put in place that can put that framework in so that each team member can contribute and have a, a bit of that leadership taste. I love that sharing leadership. And then that, to your, yes, it empowers employees. It makes them feel like they have purpose. It makes them feel like they have a sense of a role there And the title is just a title, but they know that they, you know, are there to add value and, oh, well, and it, and it's not that. just lips. It's not just lip service. So mm -hmm. I want to be careful of what I say here because it's not like, oh yeah, we're going to kind of pawn off my responsibilities and all my work onto my staff. Right. It's, <laughs> I'm going to empower them with this leadership and authority. So there's an innate sense of of satisfaction because oh wow, I'm actually impacting change. Oh, and also because for some uh, for some of us, we are more motivated with internal mm -hmm. rewards. Right, and some yeah. needs external rewards, so maybe in the form of financial gain. And so, if we can tie that together with other call it programs or approaches to things like, rather than a, a typical bonus system, like the call of a profit sharing program, Ooh. and now we empower our, our team to actually drive the profitability of the practice and then share in that profitability. So now I'm developing not only the leadership, we're developing um, ownership mentality. And mm. we're making it actionable, though. It's not, again, it's not just lip service. It's like, okay, yeah, this is the idea. And oh, by the way, here's how you're going to do it. And it works. So when you have team members that have this leadership ability to say, doctor, here's where I see things happening or not happening in my department or area, or here's uh, where we're not meeting our goals. And I think this is what we could do to get there. Here's my plan for that to happen. Right. And the doctor's role is just to bounce the ideas around and maybe give the final yes or no. But you're the individuals are setting that direction. Right. Yeah. And they know that there's also a financial reward, too, because if 
this is successful, the practice is successful, then I am also more successful. Right. So, I, there's and then lot. there's accountability on top of it. Like, oh my gosh, that's brilliant. I love that. Just making sure that everyone feels like they're part of the same goals and same initiative and empowering them to do so and not just barking orders or, you know, like, or dele- like you said, uh, well, delegating barking. everything out and be like, you do it. I don't, that's not my job. Well, it's like, funny you said, yeah, I was, you know, I was, I was speaking with this dentist and, and, and I would say, you know, somewhere mid early to mid career owner. And I said, yeah, what's your number one issue? And I said, you know, telling my employees what to do and making sure, and, and, and then them getting it done. Mm-hmm. That's not leadership. No, nope. <laughs> that's bossing. Yeah. Nobody likes to be bossed around, right? <laughs> like, like you're not the boss of me. Like that goes back to preschool, right? Don't boss me around. <laughs> Nobody likes it, right? So, so stop doing that. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, the the thing is, they don't know how to stop doing that, right? So, just come full circle to what we were saying a few minutes ago. We're not taught this. Mm-hmm. We're not taught this in dental school. We're not taught this in college. We're not taught in high school. You know how to lead, how to run a business, um, how to to, to when you're running a business, it's people, yes. right? It's not just you're not, you don't run people. You, you have to lead lead people, yep. um, and that's kind of an obligation. To it, it, my philosophy is, if you start a business where you're going to be employing people and bringing them on board, then you have an obligation to be a leader. Absolutely. If you you know, and and if you don't want to take the obligation, okay, but um, you know, we'll see how far they get. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, you're gonna you're 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 capping your own growth. Yep. Um, your own growth financially and and as a as a person, your development, right? As you move through your career, yeah, think about it. Like, if I'm not a leader and I'm just oh, I'm a dentist and I'm running a practice, I'm hiring and letting people go and having a turnstile of people, or I'm just bossing them around. Eventually, it's gonna get to a point where that gonna just wear me out, yeah. and emotionally, physically, um, and you know, at some point, you're just not gonna get. The sense of fulfillment from owning your practice and, and we know this is part of the formula yeah to get there so you do feel fulfilled at all stages of ownership because you think about we talked about trickling down it, it could go in reverse too i mean like trickle down in a bad way right so it's like if you're not motivated if you're not creating that culture um if you're not empowering your employees or giving them that in- trajectory of like what the opportunities are you're going to be going, it's going to be a revolving door with your employees. And therefore you have to retrain them. You're going to get bogged down. You're going to get exhausted. It's going to demotivate you. It's going to demotivate the team because they're just used to people coming and going. And then your patients see that. So then the revolving door happens with your patients. It's like, you need, what do you, I love how you say like, what do you want now? And what do you want later? Right. To really figure, or what is your goal essentially? And now let's create the plan to get there because otherwise it's just more about trial and error or just thinking, I, you know, I hate to say this, but in the eight years I've been in dental, it's just like, there's this, this mindset sometimes that happens that it's just a dental practice or it's just a healthcare practice. And it's like, yes, absolutely. You are so much more than that though. You are a profitable business. Let's be honest. That's why all these vendors are involved in the dental industry. And, you know, and that's why a lot of times they get into it is the art of dentistry, the people changing their lives, being a part of healthcare, and also the flexibility, the hours and the pay. <laughs> like That's all part of having it. And yeah. hundred percent. And so, you know, I, listen, if you made the decision to get into dentistry, you've gone through all of the the challenges of getting into dental school, finishing dental school and and, and and being an associate and getting better at your dentistry, you know, and your big thing is I am passionate about dentistry and I want to do great dentistry and that's where you want to spend your time um, and your focus. That's wonderful. You may be better served, you know, just being an associate because you'll get to focus on doing the dentistry. Um, but even, which is totally okay. And you can do quite well and enjoy yourself and have a great career and financially rewarding yeah. and help people and all that. You're going to eventually, though, even within that, you're going to have to expand a little bit in your thinking because you are going to have to focus on the patient experience and and make sure that that all is taken care of. But for sure, if you make the leap from I want to just do dentistry and I want to become an owner, now you've committed yourself to really having to open up your mind to a whole new way of thinking about the world, right? And you can't just get by with, well, I love dentistry and I'm passionate about it. And so therefore, this is going to be great. Because really, if, if you look at the whole landscape of what a dental practice is today, 
your competition isn't the dental practice that's down the street. Your competition is everything else that's out there. You're yeah. now really in the retail space, right? You have to create that experience. You're fighting for the dollars that are being spent at Starbucks and at the nail salon and on cruises and shopping and whatever, fill in the blank again. Um, and so to yeah. get to that level, to be able to address all of that, it's not, well, yeah, I do great dentistry. Okay, wonderful. You need to do that, obviously, to keep the doors open and to be licensed and all of that. Because like I said, whenever I meet with a new with a new client, you know, or a potential client, um, I'm like, you know, you got the dentistry part, like you're licensed, you've been gone to school, the state board will take care of all of that. I'm here to make sure that, you know, you're going beyond that. All the other parts that you have the right financials, you have the right marketing, you have the right team. You have, oh, talking about buying into culture, the right, trying to the leadership, excuse me, is the right culture of your practice, right? And so, you know, when I talk to them about your primary role is not dentistry, your primary role as the owner is to defend that culture or take one step back. Your primary role and obligation is to build a amazing world-class culture that you want to have that fits and helps you grow towards your your vision and then once you've established that is to defend it with every fiber of your being because once that culture goes everything else follows the quality of your team the quality of your work the quality of your patient experience everything will spill out so hey wake up you know if you, if it hasn't hit you yet like you i love your shiny diploma on the wall and we need that. And I want you to believe with every fiber of your being that dentistry has the power to change lives because it does. It's just like, how do you bring that to life, right? Like, how do we live that and make that into a reality and an experience and something that people want to talk about and be a part of? You know, there's like so much there, right? And, and hey, that, that, that falls on your head as a leader. It's to, to guide that, direct that, inspire that, um, and, you know, figure out how to make that happen. And if you don't know how, don't worry, you can learn it. <laughs> it is doable. <laughs> yeah, abs- and I think of that for marketing too. I mean, you, you nailed on it a little bit with marketing as far as like when you think of your culture, when you think of the practice you want to build, when you think of what you want to represent. Now with being online, I mean, you think of 15 years ago, I mean, practices, I mean, shoot, even 10 years ago, mm. practices really weren't online. It was yeah. just only focused on paper files and the patients that came in and less competitive. Um, it was more word of mouth. And now it is standing out against competition online. It's a lot more competitive that way. So in order to serve more people and to make sure that you are part of that footprint and anybody's healthcare, you mm-hmm. have to stand out, you know, you have to have a presence. And it's so hard when you, it's so hard to market something if you don't know what you stand for and what you want to bring to the industry, you right. know, like, okay, what do we, we always, sure. and you guys are like this too. We talk about your goals. We figure out what you want to achieve, right? All that goes into running your business. It goes into what fulfills you, what you can market, how you can be more profitable. But until you identify that and you're not just like, yeah, we're just, we're dental, we're the, another dental office. It's like, yeah, but what do you want to bring to the table? You know? Right. I do yeah. dentistry. I fix yeah. teeth. I fix teeth and, and I'm good at it. Yeah. Okay. Well, so is that guy over there and that gal over there. And, 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 and that's just the reality. And so that's okay. We've got that baseline. We can do dentistry. It's just, and what are we creating? So you know, what do we create that again tracks the right kind of people that want to work here? Uh, who's our team, right? Mm-hmm. It's a, a lot of it's a, a who, not how. We want to put wonderful people yeah. on the team that are committed and share the vision. And then it's, you know, yeah, attracting wonderful patients and our ideal patients. Now, again, depending on where you're at in the life cycle of your practice, you know, you're just opening the doors. You're going to be grateful for every mm-hmm. patient that walks in and you, you should be uh, and treat them as such. Right. And yeah. as you move along, you can get to a point where you can focus a lot more on who's our ideal patient, who's that avatar patient that we're really a good fit for. Who's the type of patient that will appreciate the type of dentistry that we do, the type of ex- experience that we create, um, all, all, of, all of that. And I know that's a higher level marketing kind of yes. conversation, um, but, but it is something, again, that we can guide you through and help you identify that. And then it can fuel a lot of the things that you do. And then just to nitpick on a, a comment you made uh, in passing there about, you know, and then you know, get more patients, get more patients. 
So right. sometimes that's true, right? Sometimes we need more new patients. And, and nine times out of 10, when I talk with a, a dentist that wants to grow and do better, it's like, you know, what do you need, doc? Well, I need more new patients. I'm like, are you sure? So what do you mean? So we'll do yeah. a deeper dive and we'll do a bit of an- analysis and we'll see that maybe they don't need more new patients. It could be a combination of, yes. uh, of, of ideas. It could be, well, we actually need to close that back door and retain the existing patients that we have. It's, we may be able, be able to do more with the existing patients that we already yes. have. It could be, again, the list goes on of opportunities there. And you can actually start to do better from a business perspective. Financially, you can grow um, by developing the business, developing the team, developing the leadership, developing the culture, developing the patient experience can help grow the practice without even having to acquire another patient, which that makes you more efficient as well, right? Like, so again, but we have to need to know where you're at and what you need, which is why you know, we start with where do you want, where do you want to go? But it's not just your vision. It's okay. And where are you at right now? Because if I don't know where you're at right now, I don't know what steps you need to take to get to that, that, that end goal as well. Because what's right for you is not right for somebody else. You know, at, exactly. at baseline, if you ask any business owner, dental or otherwise, you know, what's your goal? Well, to, to make money, to make more money. I don't know something like that. Right. We all, we got that part. Right. Um, but like, okay, but what about the business? What is it going to look like in a way that fits what you'll be proud of, what you think will best serve people? Uh, you know, what would you be, what, what something you would want to brag about, right? Something you want to be a part of for a long time to come, or you would feel really honored to pass on to somebody else and just different ways to think about it, you know, and then let's figure out that path to get there. So even I always love asking like, what do you want to do more of, you know, like what are the cases that you want to do? Not, not that you do currently. Usually it's like, Oh, what are your top services? It's like, yeah, but like, what do you want to, what makes you happy? Do you want to, and typically, you know, implants, Invisalign, like higher cases, you know, which of awesome. If that fulfills you, do you tell your, I love that you mentioned existing patients, right? Do you tell your existing patients that you offer those services? Are you nurturing them? Are you keeping them in the door? Or are you just making sure that you're just getting new? And are you, you know, even communicating to your existing? Because you constantly hear about new, 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 new. And I, I always say that, right? Like, I need more money and I need new patients. Right. Well, what, what's going to happen when you get them? Like, are you going to explain? And Well, there's that. You're going to keep them, right? And it costs yes. you four times as much to acquire a new patient than it does to keep an existing one. And I get it. I've heard the. Uh, I've heard it before. Well, I, I, I've done all the dentistry yeah. there is to be done on these patients. I'm like, really? Like, okay, have we? And what else can we do that we're not doing? There's so many ways to go about this. You know, are there things you're referring out that we could keep under the same roof? Which is not only obviously great for your balance sheet because you're you know increasing your production collections, but man, it creates such a better patient experience. If I'm a typical your dental patient and you're telling me I have to go off to get X, Y, and Z done by some specialist whom I've never met in an office I don't know with people I don't I, I don't know and I have to go through all that rigmarole or you know to get that root canal to get that implant or to get those braces even whatever it is oh I can stay right here and I know Susie at the front desk and I know you know Joni the dental assistant and I know you know, all of you is all familiar and I know how to get here and I don't have to fill out more paperwork. I mean, like start to think about all of the the new things that the patient has to go through just to go and get that done. Whereas we could just say, this is your home for dentistry. We'll see you next week (laughs) right here. (laughs) Right? That's just like so easy. And as a patient, like that makes me feel calm and I'm more likely to be compliant and I, and, and, and follow through on that treatment that you just recommended for me and kind of starting over from scratch and a new relationship at a new location, you know, going through all those steps of becoming a new patient somewhere else. Uh, Yeah, I I totally agree. Just making sure that you just continue to add value. Don't, don't just like do with the first new patient experience and then just like forget about them at any means you got to keep it going. And, and Brian, we talk a lot about I, I, you know, we're talking a lot about like some ideas and everything, but I, I also want to kind of touch point. I'm just like tips, you know, like what are to whether that's leadership, whether that's empowering your team, whether that's, you know, sure. making sure you're attracting new patients or keeping your existing ones or being more profitable. Like what are tips that you think practices could literally instill today 
to help them run their practice better? Loaded, a loaded question. <laughs> that is, sounds like an innocent question, but that's like, yeah, you're, you're, you're now you're asking like, hey, yeah, exactly. What do you do, Brian? Well, here's, so um, I'm going to ask some people to do something that maybe they're already doing, maybe they're not, but I'm a big fan of, this is definitely, yeah. it falls under the leadership bucket, but it's not actually feel your leadership. This is like getting smart. Okay. I, I'm a big fan of not shooting from the mm. hip, which to me means not just willy nilly making a decision of what to do next, because I feel like that might work. Like, you know, I feel like we could get more new patients because I know I met somebody in the grocery store who said they, you know, they would come to my office, but they just live too far away. So therefore, you know, I can't get anybody to come here. Well, I, you don't know that. Right, you need stats, you need information. So um, I know that's probably a poor example, but it just came to mind. But here's what I want you to do is look at your numbers. That's what I mean by mm. not shooting from the hip. Look at the statistics, because statistics don't lie, but they don't tell you the whole story either. They're an indicator of somewhere where you need to dig deeper. So for example, do you know what percentage of your active patients are not scheduled for hygiene? You know, is it is it 40% of my active patients, 10%, is it 50%. Usually we're pretty surprised when we find out what that number is and not surprised in a good way. Um, but to me, that's, that's opportunity. So if you could actually grab two, two really powerful numbers is what percentage of our patients are not scheduled for hygiene and what percentage of our patients are actually being yeah. reappointed when they finish their hygiene appointment, right? So it's two different numbers, right? It's who's actually on the books for hygiene and who's getting appointment at the moment. Because obviously between the time they they leave and let's say you got a hundred percent reappointment at, at the at the point they end their, their current appointment, um, they no show in the future or they cancel or whatever. So people drop off or historically maybe you weren't yeah. appointing well. So you might have this low appointment rate. So you can find right there two two areas you need to focus on. One is reactivation. If our current you know, snapshot of where patients are on the schedule, if they're not on the schedule, then we need to go get them, reach out to them through our avenues that we have, our tools that we have with phone calls, texting, email campaigns, et cetera, to reactivate them. And also we need to plug the hole in the first place if we're not doing a great job of reappointing them at the time of their most recent visit. And one other little tidbit, a little pearl that you can put in there if you're finding it hard at this time to, to get them scheduled at the end of their hygiene mm. appointment, then do it at the beginning of their appointment. Like why wait until they're actually trying to leave to stop them and ask them for something else? Because this happens, right? Finish the appointment, we're wrapping it up, giving them a little goodie bag. Oh, and let's get you on the books for your next appointment. When they're checking in at the front desk, hey, Ms. Smith, why we got here before? Oh my you know, gosh, I love that. Why is that back, the First Why time I'm hearing that. Out for your yeah. <laughs> and then it's done. It makes total sense. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a little, I mean, that's it's, yeah. it's tiny, but you can take your reappointment rate from here to here, like instantly. Right. And, yeah. and so I, I, I would focus on that because we know hygiene is the lifeblood of your practice. Okay. And that one right there, start plugging that yeah. hole, you know, in the next following few months, you're yeah. going to love it. Yeah, that was, oh my gosh, be beginning totally of their, stuck. like that makes absolute sense. I, I, my mind is blown right now. Like it sounds <laughs> so basic and I'm like, wait. <laughs> okay. Sorry, okay. Well, let's uh, start the so, yeah. so, well, you think, yeah, let's, uh, yeah, let's schedule you out. Yeah. And, 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 you know, if you want to be really bold, like schedule for the next two appointments. You know, and, and work on the verbals. I get it. And, you know, explain. We have ways to talk yeah. about it and present it and just and just the value of doing that. Um, but, you know, we're very full practice and we want to make sure that you get the best opportunity to come back and visit with us. So before everything gets booked up, let's go ahead and, and secure for you the best appointments. Um, and if you need to change it in the future, that's okay. We'll yeah. be here and we'll remind all, you know, we'll script it out, but you'll get very comfortable and confident with it. It's a change. And your existing patients may be not used to that. It's just retraining your patients. But yeah, 
it just and it improves the workflow as well. So your hygiene, you know, can wrap up the appointment more efficiently as well because uh, they've got a lot to do back there uh, yeah, before well, they I come mean, and get their next patient. We're so waiting um, anyway. It just moves it to you the know, front. So it's an idea, or it could, yeah. and it could be done by that. It could be Let's done by the hygienist exactly. as well. Exactly, and then you're already committed. You're already, oh, yeah. I let just knock love it out. That. Why is that blowing my mind? But yeah, no, that's that's incredible. Because on top of that, too, as far as like reactivation and reappointment, th- those are two of my favorite numbers that I think aren't appreciated as much. Like just really making sure you understand and identify your numbers, so you're not assuming of what's going on, but you actually know where the holes are, what you can work on. And I would complement that by. Obviously, to your point of saying, like, know the script, know what you're saying, know how to talk about it, have a system in place of what that process looks like to combat that and even utilize the tools that you probably already have in your practice. So whether that's added or um, revenue well, next health, solution reach, whatever that may be, make we typically find less than 10 percent of those softwares are even being utilized. So ensuring those are turned on and yeah. even adjusting them based on the numbers you're getting, you know, like if you have. If you have a lot of no-shows or cancellations, adjust your appointment reminders. Like maybe it's too long apart. Maybe, you know. Fix something. Yeah. And I'll, I'll drive home this point that, that I said just a moment ago that the, the numbers are indicators to me. They don't tell the story. So, you know, I've had this happen so many times. Where we, we, we peel back and we look at the numbers and I'll be like, gee, doc, you know, your account's receivable. What's going on there? You've got all this after 90 day uh, uh, collections that need to be come in. And I said, but what's going on there? I have to ask wh- what's happening because I don't know. And sometimes it can be, oh gosh, you know what? You're right. You know, two months ago, my office manager left and, and we just haven't been paying attention to it. Or gee, I didn't even know that. Um, I thought we were on top of it, but you know, maybe we need to adjust uh, how, you know, when we're actually asking for the payment. I, under whatever it is, you, you just don't know where that hygiene score that we're looking at of you know, who's getting appointed, not appointed. Well, gee, I don't know, maybe, oh, we've never actually taught our hygienists that they should reappoint them. Or we started doing that. I thought we were doing that. Yeah. I didn't know they stopped doing that. Like, so I, I don't have, I, I, I'm never going to assume what's happening. I just know by the numbers, doc, what's the story? And if they don't know the story, we got to go find out. Like, yeah. They don't want to be shooting from the hip, right? Exactly. Exactly. And beauty of dental is you have all the data right there. You ha- literally are documenting every step of the way when it comes to the patient. Utilize that data. And yeah, I, I, a thousand percent agree because that's how you're going to find. I, I always hate the response. I don't like to say hate, but I don't like the response of like, it feels like it's this. Or like you said, I assume it's this. You have the data. Look yeah. at it. Reflect on it. How can we make these numbers better? What are your goals? How do we get there closer? And that's really going to help attribute to your business, your practice, your patients, everything. So I, I love that. Shoot at the hip. So let's let's bring this full circle, right? So you want to be you yeah. want to exhibit great leadership, right? You don't don't do these kind of yeah. from the hip decisions. Gather information. Right, synthesize that. Whether it's some of it might be on your own, I don't know, but with your teams and but et cetera, whatever your process is, and if you need help with the process on how to make those decisions, let me know. I can talk to you about that. But then, and then you make a decision based on on the information that you have on hand. One of the things that holds up quite a few people is that fear of making that decision. So obviously, we don't want paralysis by analysis. Um, but know that as a leader. One of your responsibilities, your job is to make that decision to move things forward. And don't be afraid to make the decision. You know, you're so afraid it's going to be the wrong decision. Well, guess what? We're going to measure it along the way and we'll know quickly if it's the wrong decision. And guess what your job is then? To make another decision. That's what good leaders do. You make it the best decision you can with the information you have on hand now and does this align with our vision. And then we go. And you've probably seen it in your own businesses, right? Like, this is how we move and, and we and also we don't know what's gonna Absolutely. happen. I mean, like gosh, this is Houston. Like sometimes we have hurricanes, sometimes we have freezes and pipes break, and sometimes we have COVID <laughs> and sometimes like you're gonna have to even if you're making the best decision right now, uh, next week the whole thing could be be thrown into a, a whirlwind and we're gonna have to make more decisions. That is what it means to to to, to run a business, to run a dental practice, yes. to lead. It's, to, it's just a series of decisions. You make the best one now. And then you move and keep moving. And then you make more decisions along the way to just keep on that path. Oh, I 
Oh, I love that. This is gold. Yes. <laughs> okay, good. A thousand percent. <laughs> Brian, I always like to end these episodes sure. by talking about your favorite success story, that coaching, because you guys get to just be a part of so many amazing practices yeah. and their, their stories, their journeys. So what is your favorite success yeah. story that coaching has led to when it comes to practice growth? Oh my gosh. I know how there's so many. How personal, right? <laughs> like, I mean, I didn't say this at the front end, but you're like, my, my dad, the retired Perry Dawson, he was a coaching client of Fortune's and it empowered him to sell his practice to 54 and, oh. and all these things. But I mean, most recently, I think, you know, oh. uh, gosh, one of my clients that I started working with six years ago and still working with, when we first got started, his idea was, idea was, okay, how can I work with you to help me clean up the practice a bit? I don't mean physically, but get organized, run more smoothly, um, and then kind of figure out how I can transition out maybe two years or three years, find that associate that can take the practice over. Um, and, and that's where he started. As we got into that process of identifying what his true vision is and what really gets him excited and what makes him happy, you realize, wait, I, I'm not ready to move on. I just want to do this differently. Oh. And so now we're at six years later, um, not going to all of the steps that we went through, but um, has a beautifully expanded and remodeled and modernized office. His daughter is now the associate. They're growing the practice together. And rather than retiring and just completely selling it out, he's moving to more of a, a true leadership role. Um, still doing dentistry because he wants to, but he is in a progression handing off the leadership or business part of it over to his, his, his associate, his daughter. And he's just going to be working the number of days that he wants to, so he can go and do other things. He loves teaching at the dental school. He loves cycling. He loves traveling. Um, he does volunteer work and he's doing yeah. that, that part of his life is we're growing that more. And now he's doing more of just the dentistry that he wants to be doing. So it's what I've always said I want for every client that I work with, which is I want you to be able to work as much or as little as you want to, not because you have to. And that's where we're at now. So, not, oh, and by the way, the practice has grown. Right? <laughs> like it's already up this year, year over year. At least oh, 15, yeah, 20%. by the way. <laughs> by the way, like they're doing more dentistry, uh, more valuable dentistry and changing more people's lives. Um yeah, that's one of my faves uh, because also he's just an awesome guy. He's just turned 60 and like, I don't want to slow down. I just want to be doing it different, you know? He's like, and, and he's just that kind of high energy, you know, an Iron Man, does Iron Man, like, right? Like, uh, and, and the idea of him retiring was like, <laughs> that's going to kill you. Like, that would that would be the end of him, you know? Just, we got to shift your role yeah. to being more of a CEO. Yeah. And, and, and an inspirer, a motivator and, and a volunteer and, and, and he's very social. So, you know, being involved in a dental school gives him energy. He's working with young people. He's a high, he's, you know, guess a guy runs half marathons and does Ironmans, but he gets energy by working with students that are you know, a third of his age. I love it. Like it's, it, I always feel, I feel energized and inspired when I coach him. <laughs> so, um, you know, now it's a, the future is amazing. Oh, yeah. I'm inspired. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's yeah. amazing. You could tell, like, you could just tell too, just like, well, and we've changed a powerful part job of his, and, part oh, of his vision. Really cool. Let me be a little more specific too, because his vision was, um, but he's in a smaller community, right? And so he feels very obligated to that community to serve the community through his dentistry, through his dental practice. And he's in his experience has affected generations. So he's had, parents and their children as patients and grandchildren as patients. And, and, and his daughter who grew up in that community is now the dentist moving in and she's an excellent fit for the practice and for the community. And so we're now seeing multi-generational dentistry on both sides of the equation, right? Of the ownership, the leadership of the Talk office. Talk about the and, ripple and the effect right there. It, it's it's yeah. awesome. We, we love it. And, and they've got this like gem of an office that's like for miles around, there's not another also even healthcare provider, not just dental, you know, dental office that has such a beautiful high tech modern office with an extraordinary culture that people just love to work there. Um, and patients love to be there. And you have a dentist who just is like so excited. He's still excited after practicing for 37 years. Right. 
Now he could have told me he really could have stuck to his guns. And my vision is not to work anymore. That's great too, you know, <laughs> but that's not where he's at. This is what yeah. he wants to do. And we're going to make it happen. Oh my gosh. That's, inc- oh, I love that. I love it. Thank you for sharing that. And sure. thank all of you. And thanks for coming, Brian. This has been a great sure. episode. I really love it. It's picking your brain about leadership and everything. So thank you so much. Yep. I love it. I thanks love talking with you, you guys. Good. We're going to have you back. Da, da, da. Right. Anytime. <laughs> Just let me know. <laughs> Part two. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's <laughs> well, do it. Well, thank all of you for tuning in. If you are in the greater Houston area and want to learn more about bringing your practice to the next level, talk with Dr. Brian Passell and go to Fortune Management, that's MGMT.com, or scan the QR code to contact him directly. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Thanks, guys. Bye. (laughs) 